Hi, and welcome to my beginner's guide and review for Conquest of Elysium 5. I'm Icon, and in this video I will introduce the core gameplay loop of the game. I will talk about what's great, I will talk about what's not so great, and I will also give you a general impression about how to play this game. So this video is meant for people who want to have a review about this game and people who are stranded at the screen and want to get some help to get the ball rolling. So, we will start out quite quickly here. We get to select a map size, we get to select a background. These are basically different flavors of, of the world, different epochs, eras, if you want to, and they influence your gameplay quite massively. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to go for the agricultural background, which features a lot of uh, hamlets and villages, but almost no cities. This is basically a very primal era of the world. For starters, I would strongly recommend to turn on the battle reports function because this is by default off, but it really, really helps you a ton to understand what has happened. And because this game is quite deep and complex, I can only recommend it. The other things are not too important. We're going to just get started here. So with the participating uh, parties, for beginners, I'd strongly recommend you to keep the difficulty low of the AI enemies so they don't interfere with you learning the game. Because the first couple of games you will be just learning what's there and you're going to enjoy that massively. At least if you like the game in general. With the classes you have a selection of a massive amount of different classes. These are all different factions that behave differently and have their unique characteristics. The Necromancer faction has own abilities and own background story. And in these regards, Conquest of Elysium V is a massive masterpiece. This is a complete fantasy world to dive, to immerse yourself into and read flavor texts of all, about all the factions. As a matter of fact, you can quite get lost in that in a good way. And this makes this game quite vibrant if you are ready to read some lines of text. For the sake of easiness, we're going to randomize our selection and just dive into the game. So we get to play Scourge Lords. Okay, so the faction you're playing is totally influencing your play style by giving you access to a certain resource which is only accessible for your faction and lots of unique items, uh, not items, un units and uh, gameplay mechanics. But more about that in a minute. What we're seeing here is the main screen of the game and that's what you're going to look at most of the time. Up here in the corner are your leaders. Leaders are units which are capable of amassing an army around them. Not every unit can be just sent over the map autonomously. They need to follow a certain leader. You always start out with two leader units. The first one is uh, supposed to be your main character here in this situation, Udba the Scourge Lord, which is basically the leader of, of this whole bunch. You see here a average character file. We're going to look at these in detail in a couple of minutes. I don't want to uh, bring in stats now because we are not even able to move across the map yet. So when you want to check out how, how armies are working out, you need to go into the transfer units screen. In this screen here, you see what kind of uh, units are here on the tile. We see here our good friend Utba, and you can just click on every unit and get it into the selection there. Every thing or most things in this games in this game are right clickable and give you a uh, tooltip box which gives you a lot of information about that by the way every unit has its own background lore which is worth studying because it's really fun to read that so you can either now select these uh, units by one by one or you click the first one hold down the shift button and then you can select multiple lines that's also a good thing. Works out with uh, pretty much everything which can be moved. There we go. So we're, you can now either decide if you want to put your second leader that you have into one army or not. I would strongly recommend you not to because a second leader is very, very important. I'm going to talk about that in a minute now too. So now we have on our leader as we see these units as is uh, as they are depicted here a couple of desert warriors and camel riders so 
With these now, we can move across the map and attack units. You might have already noticed that there's a lot of units hanging around here. So these are all independent units. And when you right click a tile, you can also see how these are or may, how these are formed here on that tile, you can right click them and check out their, uh, their overall stats. So we want to talk about stats now a bit. You always can see how a unit is uh, made up here, how much hit points, the, the strength, the moral, experience, magic resistance, armor, where it will be found in the ranks of the army and how many kills it already made, the equipment. This is all very, very detailed. If you are new to this game, you should pay attention to a couple of things that are easily perceptible. First off, the higher the hit points, the brawnier the unit, the goes without saying. The higher the armor, the harder to kill. Armor in this game is a flat reduction of damage, and you see the damage numbers are quite low. 1, point, 1 to 3 points of pierce damage. A unit with an armor rating of 4 would completely negate the damage of those bandits in general. So, a couple of points of armor are really massive in this game. And the other stats, well, magic resistance is not working like armor. I would say you can always right click the most things, or you see that uh, text box at the lower end of the screen. Study everything according to your own taste. The most direct approaches of uh, seeing how powerful a unit is check the, check, check the hit points, check the armor, and check the damages on their skills. That's grossly simplifying to everybody who knows more about these games, but it helps you to get a quick impression of things. Okay, so to do combat in this game, you simply select your leader, left click on the tile, left click again to uh, tell them to go there, and if the army is weak enough, they get overrun. So you see that there are some tiles cornered with these red brackets. That means my faction is a uh, controlling that area and if you mouse over these areas you see that they have icons like these you can always press i to put up uh, a terrain info about every tile there and you see if we control that coastal hamlet our gold income will increase so let's do that moving over here costs us one point of uh, movement you see we got three action points there and now we control that hamlet and up here you see your resource income so we got gold and this is iron, this is the amount of trade routes uh, open for you, and this is the amount of life force we own. This is usually your faction's special resource. We're going to talk about that in a second too. So with this now, we can pretty much conquer the world. We might attack this fortress here a little bit later when we are a little bit stronger. For now, let's just send Utba around here and sent him into, into the coastal hamlet. So these guys, they didn't uh, get overrun directly. These crossed swords mean that there will be a battle resolved soon. So the next turn can be uh, found here in the upper left corner, or you pre just press the Y button. So at the end of each turn, combats get resolved. And you can now, with the battle report function, you can now either view the combat or go directly to the battle statistics if you don't have it uh, if you don't have the battle reports enabled you will jump directly to the screen so up here you see the combat speed and now let's put this to a normal speed and let's see what happens there unpause and combat in this game is always automatic your units will behave like they are scripted, and as you see here, my desert warriors are all equipped with bows and just gunned down these people. Also, my desert warriors are also equipped with bows, so no problem whatsoever. Also, keep an eye out for these little icons above the equipment. This is the next thing you should pay attention to after you've understood hit points, armor, and equipment. These are special, uh, special abilities of your units. For example, my desert warriors use less movement points for desert tiles goes without saying so the battle statistics all you also show you now how the combat went this is really important because here you can see your own losses 
Without the battle reports function, you will, you will have to pay close attention to what has happened there to even notice your, your losses. The text box over here gives you a lot of information about every single action. So if you ever don't understand anything, the information is right there. So now the new turn has uh, begun and I pushed some buttons and walked into that uh, tower. So that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to scroll the map. Whatever. So we're going to do a new fight here. And let's check out the stats first. We can see we won. And if you are more interested in how that worked out, you can view the combat. We're going to speed that up this time and check this out. I mean, luckily we were strong enough to do that. And as you have noticed here, this character here casts some blue flame spells. And there's also other things happening that's because our scourge lord is not just an attacker he's casting lots of spells this is where the game grows more and more complicated luckily they do everything automatically i personally can only recommend study each effect according to your own information hunger you should always know what everybody does but uh, you should not go too nervous about if things are overwhelming for you. So for example, now I can check out what uh, stat what statuses this unit is suffering from. I can also check out the casts the the, Scourge Lord, uh, the spells the Scourge Lord has cast and you can also just check out how these spells work. There's a lot of depth in this and once you get the basic hang of it, it really grows less and less complicated. The only thing there is since every single faction in this game has its own mechanics, the learning curve for the uh, more challenging gameplay is quite steep. That's why I recommend beginners of the game that you should just play with simple, simple, simple AI enemies. Because the wilderness will uh, and the events of the, of the world will put you on, on enough challenge. Okay. So to bolster your ranks, you can recruit new units. So here at the Citadel, if you hold down the right mouse button long enough, the recruitment window will open. Up here, you see where you can recruit units. We've just conquered that tower, so we can recruit units there as well. This is a list of units that belong to your faction, units you can't just summon by default. This list lo looks different for every single faction out there. The costs are gold and iron. You see, we don't have any iron income and that's bad. You can get iron income from mines, which are, can be found sometimes on the map, but also via trade. Up here, you have that uh, trade icon, which can be clicked there. And here you can buy iron. So when you buy iron, you will spend some of your gold per turn, but you will also receive one iron per trade route you put up there. So that's pretty powerful. If you don't have any access to mines early on, trade routes will do. Every single town which has been claimed gives you different resources. Checking out your tiles and pressing the I button is always pretty important because there are so many stats here. You see, this is uh, just a example about how a citadel works. Overall, this game is really good to be played easily it's really easy to pick it up but it's very difficult to master it and my personal recommendation is just play it play it do your own mistakes get smashed by random things and enjoy yourself instead of going crazy about learning everything before enjoying the game this would be really really contra contraproductive so let's dive into the special power menu here you're tr you will truly see the specialties of your faction. Every faction has different special powers. So, for example, we can here use life force to construct a pillar, uh, no, to learn new rituals. Up here, you can, you can spend these things to grant yourself a new ritual. And here we have already a couple of rituals prefabricated. We can appoint a herald. So we can create a Herald of the Scourge. Herald will gain physical strength and, strength and magical powers. These things are completely unique to every faction and 
you can unlock just new things. Call of the Pyramid allows the caster to immediately transport himself to a known pyramid of power wherever you might find one. So overall the special power menu gives you a hint of how you want to play your your faction in general because the rituals you will find and all these things will give you an idea of well, things you can achieve for example necromancer factions can do lots of nasty things to summon new things we can learn here constantly new rituals and you can enhance your minds with that. There's a lot to discover and I, I don't want to uh, point out too many things. I just want to say how it works. It works that simple. For example, here we obviously gain the life force out of Pillars of Power. So we will. our goal is to find new sources of that life force to grow stronger. Maybe there are also rituals down there to unlock which give us new sources for that. I haven't played the Scourge Lord faction myself yet, so I can't really tell. Here we have unlocked a market village, which also offers a trade route, and there you see already the complexity and depth. We're conquering the world around us, we can recruit units here, and from that we will start and conquer the world. The units you have here are every week or every turn a little bit different. We're going to recruit ourselves some new camel riders here and you can only recruit once per turn so if you have a lot of resources you might want to stress that out as good as you can so let's get over here transfer units and get these people over here so since the independent units are always roaming and doing their own thing as well it's highly recommendable that you start spreading your power over different uh armies you always get these uh, opportunities green colored units which are limited time offers they don't cost you that they you can always recruit something limited and raise some units so basically the green colored thingies are freebies they don't take up your slot of weekly raisings of troops also you get the you get some special units unique to your faction here or mercenaries which are just offering their services to everybody what's really important there is you should always keep an eye out for these units because you can really really find valuable things there also you should massively force yourself to explore the world and save a lot because there are really nasty combats out there and you never know how powerful something is until you really have fought there. So as you see here at the Pillar of Power, obviously we gather ghouls, for whatever reason that is, and we can take them into our army as well and start conquering the world. From here on, it's up to you to discover what you want to do. There's a couple of important uh, things up here. You can get to the recruitment menu with this button here as well. You can read the messages, reread the messages of the month here, and most importantly, unit overviews and player overviews. If you have also turned on the score graphs, you can check out how far ahead or far behind you are. Up here, you can also see different planes of existence because you know that's just fun. Why have only one world when you can have when you can have more of them, and the rest is just exploration. You will get beaten down several times until you truly master how everything here works. It is super easy to clear your vicinity there, but it grows really hard to conquer the rest of the world and to get the ball rolling to survive the later stages of the game. You should always keep an eye out for special things like libraries and other specialty uh, locations which unlock new things. Spellcasters in general want to search for sites of arcane knowledge whereas other factions like the uh, there's a faction called the Baron faction which is basically medieval power. They can upgrade hamlets and such to grow more knights in there. It's really up to your faction to find out what you are really looking for and what you really want to go for. 
So take your time, explore the world and enjoy the game. There's really not much more to say except for you will play quite some time until you have really understood how everything works. There's also artifacts in this game, there's a lot of different faction interactions in this game and you are in for a treat if you love high fantasy and yeah. That's that. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Feel free to leave questions here if there are any. Just ask away. I will do my best to answer them. And of course, leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed it to make it more visible to the rest of the world. And last but not least, there's also my channel where I put up daily videos so you might want to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you are really interested in what I'm doing, also down there in the text box, you will find several links to my Twitch channel, my Discord community, or direct financial help if you want to give me a helping hand. I'd be more than grateful if you did, but don't you mind if you don't. I just hope you have a great time and see you soon. Goodbye!